Thank you. We now turn to topical questions, and we start with question number one from Rachel Hamilton. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to protect children involved in football from sexual abuse. Minister Mark MacDonald. Uh, ensuring the safety and well-being of children in Scotland, including when they take part in sport, uh, is of paramount importance to us all. Uh, through Sport Scotland, Children First has been funded to provide training, information and support to Scottish governing bodies of sport. Uh, this work includes putting in place minimum operating requirements for, children to take, uh, for, for child protection to safeguard children uh, and ensure that sport governing bodies take a consistent approach. The Scottish FA have implemented these requirements to ensure that all qualified coaches involved in youth football are registered with them and have undertaken the necessary disclosure checks. With regard to the horrific allegations of non-recent abuse made over the last week in England, any allegation of abuse should be directed to the police to investigate. The Scottish FA is also encouraging anyone who has concerns relating to child abuse in Scottish football to contact the dedicated NSPCC hotline on 0800 0232642. The hotline will be available 24 hours a day and people who call will receive professional assistance and support in strict confidence. Rachel Hamilton. I thank the Minister for that answer. Clearly this is a distressing issue and one that should be approached with care and consideration. Does the Scottish Government support calls from the likes of Gordon Smith, former SFA Chief Executive, to launch a wider inquiry into other areas such as sport? Minister. Uh, as I have mentioned, the uh, hotline which was recently launched uh, by NSPCC uh, is available uh, to receive calls. Uh, it only launched on Friday and at this stage it is too early to give an indication as to how many calls have been received. But Scottish Government will continue to liaise with NSPCC and with governing bodies uh, in relation to uh, the volume of calls received uh, and whether any further steps are required uh, later on in this process. Rachel Hamilton. I appreciate the work that you've done by setting up the hotline. However, I am disappointed that the Scottish Government is not going forward with an, forward with an investigation into the abuse in sports clubs. When asked about the current inquiry, Break the Silence said, where we stand, it makes no difference where the abuse occurred. All survivors should be able to access recovery services. The current inquiry risks not going far enough and helping victims of child abuse. Will the Scottish Government listen and reconsider and instigate a focused investigation into abuse into sports clubs? Minister. Uh, so, in relation to the remit uh, of the inquiry into historic child abuse, Rachel Hamilton will, of course, be aware that the Deputy First Minister uh, made a statement to Parliament where he made clear the parameters that that review uh, would cover and uh, was very clear as to the reasons which lay behind that. Um, that said, we do take seriously any indications uh, or reports uh, of sexual abuse uh, in sporting uh, bodies uh, and that is why we will continue to monitor the uh, number of calls that are made to the hotline uh, and determine uh, alongside other bodies whether any further action is required in this specific area but that does not affect the remit of the historic abuse inquiry which has been set by the Deputy First Minister. Christine Graham. Thank you, President Officer. I note the Minister, in his answer to Rachel Hamilton, has stated that any allegations of sexual abuse of young people in Scotland, young players in Scotland, should be referred immediately to Police Scotland. Therefore, does he agree with me that the Scottish Football Association should not take up any investigatory role in these matters, as there may very well be a conflict of interest, and any referrals to them, they should immediately refer to Police Scotland? Minister. Well, anyone who believes they were abused as a child uh, involved in football or who has a concern about someone they think was abused uh, should contact police to investigate. Uh, that would also apply to anyone currently being abused or concerned about a child being abused, whether at football or any other sporting environment uh, or indeed in any other circumstance. Police Scotland are the right people to investigate criminal offences of abuse, uh, whether current or non-recent, and I would concur uh, with Christine Graham in that respect. Okay, question number two, Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the Scottish Children's Services Coalition warning that Scotland faces a lost generation of children with additional support needs. Minister. 
The Additional Support for Learning Act places duties on education authorities to identify, provide for and review the additional support needs of their pupils. Uh, since it was first passed in 2004, uh, the Act has been amended uh, in both 2009 and again last year to ensure that children's rights sit at the heart of the legislation, the framework and the approach taken. Uh, the Act and other actions taken by this Government and partner agencies, uh, including education authorities, which in 2015 increased their spending on additional support needs by £24 million pounds, uh, are helping to provide better outcomes for children and young people with additional support needs. Achievement and attainment is continuing to improve. In 2015, 86.2% .2 of pupils with additional support needs had a positive destination compared with 82.3% in 2011-12 and 60.7% of 2014-15 school leavers uh, with additional support needs left school with one or more qualification at SCQF level 5 or better, uh, an increase of 11.2 percentage points since 2011-12. Uh, clearly we need to do more and stay focused on ensuring that children and young people are supported to fulfil their potential. Monica Lennon. I thank the Minister for his answer and I should uh, refer to my register of interest as I am a local councillor in South Lanarkshire Council. Official figures for 2015 show that 22.5% of pupils were recorded as having additional support needs. That is an increase of 16% since 2013. Meanwhile, the number of learning support teachers fell by 13% between 2010 and 2015, a decrease of 427. And the number of support staff in schools, such as additional support needs, auxiliaries and behaviour support staff, dropped by more than 9% between 2010 and 2015. That's a reduction in just over 1,800. Will the Minister act to protect the most vulnerable pupils by ruling out cuts to local authority budgets? Minister. Well, it's worth noting in relation to the figures which Monica Lennon cites, she cites the figures uh, relating to pupils with additional support needs. It's worth reflecting on what those figures capture because they capture pupils with any uh, requirement for additional support throughout a school year. Now, that does not necessarily mean uh, an identified additional support need that is concurrent throughout that year. It could be, for example, as a result of a family bereavement, which requires additional support to be provided to the pupil. That was a change uh, that was made to the statistics that were collected uh, and that reflects uh, perhaps some of, the, some of those figures that are captured by Monica Lennon. It's also worth uh, noting that around 95% of children are educated within mainstream settings and support is provided uh, both in terms of classroom support, uh, where we've seen an increase in the number uh, of classroom assistants in Scotland, uh, but also in terms of teacher professional development uh, to enable teachers to better understand and support the needs of children with additional support needs. Monica Lennon. I thank the Minister for his answer. Um, the figures that I read out previously are concerning, but it's not just me that's concerned. I know that the Scottish Children's Services Coalition has written to the Scottish Government, alongside local authorities, to say that these cuts are affecting vulnerable children and families in Scotland. And we read today in a new report from the Accounts Commission that local authorities face a predicted funding gap of £553 million by 2018 19. Scottish Labour would use the new powers of this Parliament to invest in vital services. The Minister hasn't ruled out further cuts today, but will he think again and begin to listen to the Scottish Children's Services Coalition and parents across Scotland to seriously address the need to increase resources for services for children and young people with additional support needs? Minister. Well, I, I repeat uh, the point that was made in my initial answer to Monica Lennon that in 2015, which is the last year that we have audited figures for, uh, the spend on additional support needs across local authorities increased by £24 million. Pounds. But I have read the um, Scottish Children's Services Coalition press release. It makes clear that the genesis uh, of their concern uh, comes as a result of Philip Hammond's autumn statement, and that is the reality within which we operate in fiscal terms. But they also go on, they also go on to state uh, in their press release that, that what we need to look at uh, is greater public sector reform and collaboration. And that is an agenda that I think we should all uh, be signed up to. It follows very clearly on uh, in the spirit of the Christie Commission. And it's something which I will be more than happy to discuss with the Scottish Children's Services Coalition uh, in response to the letter that they have sent to the Scottish Government. Jeremy Balfour. 
Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Presiding Officer. I recently visited CMAB School in Persia, which cares for and educates vulnerable children with complex needs aged between 5 and 13. One member of staff informed me that one of the children attending that school had had 17 different care placements before they arrived at the school. Another told me that one child was about to be removed from the school because the local authority was no longer willing to pay the amount to that school. Would the minister agree with me that any child being placed in 17 different sets of foster parents or any child being removed from a school because of a financial measure is being failed by us all? And will he write today to each local authority to confirm this government's position that each child needs to be met according to their need, not any other reason? Minister. Yeah, well, um, the principle that lies behind uh, GERFEC is, of course, getting it right for every child. Uh, the points which Jeremy Balfour makes, I think, tie in uh, quite uh, succinctly to the points that were raised during the recent uh, debate last, well, the debate last week that we had in relation to adoption and permanence, uh, and will also, I'm sure, feed into the work that is being undertaken in relation to the care review, in relation to uh, those children who perhaps find themselves moving uh, from place to place rather than being able to achieve early permanence, which, as a consequence, derives better outcomes for that child. So I take on board the points he's making. They would perhaps be better addressed uh, as part of that wider review, and I'm sure Jeremy Balfour and other members will take the opportunity to feed their views into that review of how best they see it going forward. Thank you. Thank members. That concludes topical questions.